Today we're sitting down with Amber Liebrock on the heels of her win. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Well, let me jump into Wednesday night. How do you feel five, six, seven days removed where you've had a chance to really digest it? I felt really good Wednesday night. There, I don't think I've felt that good for a fight in a long time. I was extremely confident in my preparation. I knew that I had did everything I possibly could do that camp. I felt extremely grateful and honored to be back on the Invictus stage. So there was a lot of emotion, obviously, as you can see after the fight, had a lot of feelings, a lot of emotion. I felt so right. You know, I just remember standing in that cage when I was first becoming like a pro. And I think I was in like my first or second pro fight. And one of my old coaches told me, if you don't stand in that cage and that cl door closes and it doesn't feel like home, then that cage probably isn't for you. And I remember just standing there Wednesday night feeling like, man, this feels like home. This feels so good to be back. So yeah, all, nothing but great feelings and positive, even with the nerves and the adrenaline, like it all just felt so right. And I'm just glad that I was able to perform and show everybody a little bit different side of my game that no one's really seen before. And you probably mean the fact that it's your first submission win, right? Yeah, like I don't even think people have really got to see me even defend as well as I was for the takedown. Like she was that takedown like right off the bat. Like I thought she was going to throw a punch or two first, but she just wanted, you know, straight to wrestle. And I was able to show like my defense off the fence was pretty good. You know, my control on the ground was good. And obviously my first sub as a professional. You have five finishes in six career wins, which is a very high finish rate for anyone not to mention a female fighter. Are you going out there with the intention of trying to finish your opponent? Is that part of the game plan? Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Like I'm able to kind of see everything, right? Like long fight, short fight, second round finishes, but somewhere in there, there's always a finish. You know, I, I want to be an exciting fighter. I want to give fans something to watch. I think, especially in the featherweight division, it almost seems like featherweights are just too content with just winning or losing, you know, like they just want to win. However, they have to edge that win out. They're going to. And if that means putting on these violent, risky kind of fights, you know, and as a fighter, someone who wants to be a finisher, risk with the reward, you kind of have to put yourself out there to be able to do stuff like that. And that's the kind of fighter I want to be. I want people to tune in and be like, man, this is going to be a banger. Everybody watch Amber's fighting. And that's just kind of the note I want to leave on. You mentioned something that made me think of a different question. You said to me before, when you closed the cage behind you, that you should feel at home, right? That phrase you got from a a coach or a mentor. Yeah. What about that fear though? There's something there the night before, the days before, maybe you have an injury in camp and you know you're not at a hundred percent. What are those emotions like? How do you manage that? Or have you had moments in the cage you're thinking, I'm I'm hurt. I might lose this fight. The fight with Arlene, you know, I was like, fuck, like nothing I'm doing is really working all the way. She's tagging me a lot. You know, she ended up slamming me on my neck. I've had a lot of fights where throughout my, my whole Bellator career, besides the one that I won, I felt like I just kind of quit on myself in those fights, you know, letting the fear take over, like believing that I wasn't as good as these girls or belonged in there with them. So yeah, if any fighter tells you that they're not scared or don't have at least a little bit of fear, they're either Kamzat or some crazy, <laughs> just I don't care kind of person, but 85% of the fighters out there, we all feel a little bit of fear. At the same time of feeling fear, that's where our courage comes from because we know we're going to do it anyways. You can be as scared as you want. It's going to happen. You've signed the contract. It's a date, you know, and this other person's counting on you. So you can't run away before the cage door opens or before you get in there, like fear or not, like you're going to have to do it. Feel the fear, like know you're alive, but be confident in your preparation. And that's really something that I've really tried to take with this camp was just don't leave no stones unturned. So when it comes to fight night, you can't sit back and be like, oh man, I wish, well, I should have done this more. I should have ran more. I should have done, you know, like just leave all those I should have out of it and believe in yourself. Looking at your prior fights, I thought there was a significant evolution in this fight. There was something very different about the way you fought. Do you feel more confident right now than you've been in the past? 
Absolutely. I feel like a different woman. I feel like I'm more mature. I understand fighting more. I feel like before I had this kind of like fake persona of being this tough girl fighter. Everyone should be scared of me, you know? And then when I got in there and faced some real competition, you know, Arlene Blencow was probably the main one that really showed me that like some of these bitches don't care. There's some women out there that are going to come at you and they're, they're trying to kill you just as much as you're trying to kill them. So I think it made me more aware and just more confident in myself because now I've been forced to go into training with a different mindset. I can't just half-ass things. I'm not just going to be able to knock girls out. I have to train. I have to do the work. I think this time I just felt it. I felt like a professional. I felt like I did everything I was supposed to do. I did everything right this time. Well, Arlene Blenkow is a tough son of a bitch. For sure. I mean, but you need fights like that, especially when for someone like me that was kind of building this fake persona of being too tough. Now I'm just grateful. Like I was really scared I was going to lose my career during this whole COVID thing. I'm not getting any younger. I didn't know when it was going to be over. And I'm like, man, this could be it. You know, time literally could just not be on my side. So having the opportunity again to just get in there left me with so many grateful, thankful feelings that I was able to just kind of show my true self all fight week and in the cage and just with Invicta in general, you know, I kind of felt like for the first time, I wasn't trying to pretend to be something I wasn't. I was just authentically me. We all go through that. At some point in your life, you realize putting up the front, who is it for? It's not helping you. <laughs> yeah. And especially being a fighter, like that shit gets exposed. And I kind of grew up in the sport you know, going from Invicta straight to Bellator. And it taught me a lot. My losses taught me more than any win ever has. And I'm just thankful that I was able to take those losses and learn from them and grow from them and become better. Do you see UFC in the future? I mean, you're on a three fight winning streak. There's tons of former Invicta fighters who've made their way, obviously, to Bellator UFC. Is that something that you have in mind? Do you have your goals set on possibly making the UFC roster at some point? Absolutely. You know, I really hope that I can show the world while I'm with Invicta, like featherweights are here. We've got that star power too, you know, people want to watch us. We possess knockout power, athleticism, all of it. And I want to be the one that kind of brings a little bit more light to the division. And I want people to notice us featherweights again. And I would really want to make that walk at least once as a professional, you know, and I think that anyone that says that they don't really want to hit the UFC either is getting paid buku money <laughs> else or they're just you know not fully believing that they can do it but for me like i want to make that walk i want to know what it feels like i want to fight under those lights for sure you're very photogenic it's nice to watch female fighters but it's even nicer to watch attractive female fighters you literally kick people's asses for a living how do you turn this on from being a pretty girl and then being a brute I mean, I don't know. I I train with a lot of beautiful women, um, you know, and I've definitely been a part of conversations where they're like, oh, pretty girls get this and that as fighters. They don't have to show the skill. So it feels good to, you know, be somebody who trains really hard, works really hard, you know, is a dog on the mat. Like I train with men. There's not one gym I don't step foot on that they won't tell you how hard I work. And, you know, it's still not bad to be easy on the eyes as well, you know, because it is true. This is a sport and you want people to watch and however, you know, it gets people to watch. Like as long as they're watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and listen, and I say it sincerely because I'm a fan of sports. I'm a former athlete myself. And if you've done a sport for a long time, you get, you get fully ingratiated with the technique and the skills that require that to be good at that sport. It's not about the body type or the person's face, whatever. But from a marketing standpoint, for real, for real, it's nice for the girls that are out there. You know, you have that look. You're also very tall for this division. That's going to be huge for you. If you can maintain this weight, your striking advantage is just gigantic. Yeah, you know, my coach will tell me, and she's like, man, when you are being long and like rangy and down the middle, some of the most beautiful striking I've ever seen in my life. And it is an advantage. I spent my whole life hating being tall until I became a fighter. And I was like, oh, wait a second. People love it. Like it works, you know? Um, and I, I plan on staying at 45. I plan staying in this division. I definitely can never make 35s and 55s just aren't in my thought process at the moment. So I want to stay here. And I think that my attributes fit the division very, very well. I've seen a lot of other long, tall fighters do well at 45. And I think that this is, I, I've got the perfect frame for this weight class. If you were not 
a mixed martial arts athlete, what would you be doing with your life right now? Well, I always wanted to be a runway model. So that was kind of like my first, first dream a long, long time ago. If I wasn't an athlete, I would probably be trying to still develop my business with autistic people. I don't know if I would still be doing fitness if I wasn't an athlete, but right now, if I wasn't fully working on being an athlete, I would definitely be trying to build my program for people with autism. How tall are you? Six foot. Yeah. So the runway thing, it, it, there's still a chance there. Okay. You're very tall. Yeah. I mean, that would always be fun. The only reason why I kind of got out of that is because they always wanted runway models to be super skinny and I was never interested in being super, super skinny. I always wanted to be, you know, athletic built. Well, thank God things have changed now. The athletic build is very in. You're tatted up. You got this awesome leg tat. I'm not sure which leg it is. What is the tat? What, what is there? Uh, a phoenix down half of it. There's a lotus flower in the middle and then a koi fish at the top. Get that filled in. I'm going to, I want to finish my leg for sure. That's awesome. I always want to thank my sponsors. I have far too many to just like list off the names, my sponsors and supporters, everyone that just kind of keeps me running through my fight camps and training in general. Like you guys all know who you are. I'm super thankful for you all. The support definitely is much needed from the outside sometimes. And then my coaches over at Combat Sports Academy, all my teammates, like this isn't just a me thing like we all train together we do this together team alpha male for always allowing me to come up and spar and get some training in and then my home away from home at el nino training center with gilbert melendez and then special special thank you to my grappling coach adam piccolotti as well because he spends a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with me he, um, you know, him and Gilbert have definitely refined my MMA, my MMA grappling helped me become more of a finisher, like looking for chokes and things like that. So, you know, without all of us, I don't really think I would be as confident or have my fire IQ as high as it is right now, if it wasn't for all my people, you know, so just thank you to everybody that's on the mats with me day in, day out. If you're a young athlete and you just heard that it takes a village. It, it takes a lot of people to help someone like yourself achieve these successes. And then, like, that's also why I try to keep the mentality of just being grateful and thankful because these people are also putting their bodies on the line. If you have like a super strong team, if you're not fighting, you're still on the mat helping your teammates, you know, and people do that for you as well. So as much as people are like, oh, this is an individual sport, you're right. You get in there alone, but you don't get in there alone and you don't get there alone. You might get in there alone, but you don't get to that cage door alone. There is literally a group of people that leave you at that door. And those are the important ones. And then the ones after that are all the people that help prepare you to get to that door. So it's definitely a village. Hey guys, Amber Liebrock here. I just want to thank Manny and the MMA Fight Club team for having me out. You know, as much as we need all the love and support we can get as female fighters, Manny and his crew over at MMA Fight Club give us that. So I just want to say thank you and tell you guys how much I love it here. Mwah. I really appreciate your time, Amber. Good luck with everything. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, deuces. Bye. Thank you for joining us. We hope you liked the interview. If you look down below in the description, we're going to include some of the socials for Amber Liebrock. You can follow her on Twitter and on Instagram. Great fighter, bright future. Thanks for joining us, guys, and we'll see you soon.